In this video, we're building a canopy from scratch. We'll take you through the cutting, the folding, the welding, and finally, the overall design. For those of you who have been following along, you'll know that I've had a pretty basic setup until now. There are a lot of different canopies on the market which I could buy, but this is a build channel, and believe it or not, I really enjoy designing and building things. Hence, I've decided to make my own, which is more suited to my car for a fraction of the price. We're in Shepparton today. We're here at ACF Fab with Justin. Justin runs this business. Now we're here today to build the canopy. Justin has a really fancy press brake, which you see behind us. And he also has a CNC plasma table, much like ours, where we got a lot of the inspiration from, truth be told. And I guess uh, the whole idea of today is to start from raw sheet, which you see over there, and then to basically tack a canopy together, put it on the back of my ute, and I'll take it home and do full passes. The reason why we're here today is because we have access to these fantastic machines. And normally I do tend to get a lot of stuff outsourced, so I get it laser cut and CNC folded, but by doing it here, it means we get to bring you along for the ride and we get to do it all ourselves. Justin's going to be helping me with this canopy. We're drawing on a lot of his experience. He's built a few canopies in the past, more than a few, right? Oh, we're getting there, yeah. Getting up. <laughs> yeah, getting up. So he's, he's actually really experienced with canopies and I guess you've been following along with my build and you'll know that I've got some seal tolerances wrong with my rear drawer and I really don't want to mess up my canopy. I want it to be right the first time. So I think that's why it's a good idea to use someone with experience like Justin. So I did a basic CAD design and I basically shipped it off to Justin who's helped me get all the folds and the tolerances right on it. Um, and it, it's basically just a gull wing canopy. It's full length. Justin, do you, do you quickly want to tell us a little bit about what you do here? Uh, pretty well. Started off just doing um, basic fabrication and a bit of machining. I'm fitted by trade. And um, with the market the way it is, quickly ventured into getting a lot of requests for aluminium canopies and then trays and things. And it's sort of turned into probably 80% of my work now. And um, yeah, it's, each one you do is a bit better than the last. And we can put them together and make sure they're better than uh, well, the best they can possibly be. And Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I've seen a couple of Justin's finished canopies and I was really, really impressed with it. There's a lot of thought going into the design. Um, so if you want a quality canopy, don't be afraid to hit up ACF and he'll probably tell you there's like a three-year wait on him. No, I'm joking. He's, he, he's, uh, he'll, squeeze, he'll squeeze it in. So there's eight sheets of three mil alley here. This is what we're starting with. We're going to start cutting the panels on the plasma table. This may look familiar for the regular viewers on my channel. We have one of these back at LCS. This one's actually finished a little bit nicer. It has some really cool panels and, and whatnot, but um, we might add those to ours as well. It's not too late. We'll be cutting all the panels here on this CNC plasma table, and then they'll be going on this Amada 80 ton press. And we'll get to bring you along for the ride, which is pretty cool because previously I haven't got to do that. We've just been outsourcing everything. Filling up the plasma table. Justin and I are dividing and conquering today. While he uses the plasma and the press brake, I'll be making the frame out of the Unistrut. Of course, this channel is small time, so I'm madly rushing around trying to set up cameras and trying not to impede on our work as well. See here, these are all the cutout sheets off the plasma table. So these have been cleaned and deburred. It's an old banger, 1988 Amata. Um, probably, in my opinion, a better one because old stuff's always better. It's had a brand new computer system put on it, so it's got 3D visual sort of controls on it. Um, all the cylinders have been rebuilt, so she's basically a brand new machine and an old skin. Um, weighs six and a half ton, 80 ton pushing force, and um, does a bloody good job.
where it gets hard, isn't it? The tricky one. makes up the back panel for the canopy. So we're using this 41.3 by 41.3 Unistrut extrusion. One of the reasons why we're using this Unistrut is we can use these fasteners on the inside so there's a spring and then you can bolt whatever you want and move it up. So you'll see this, this will form the frame of the canopy which is going to be really cool. Okay, Justin's operating the plasma and I'm just going to deburr these, make it really nice for us to weld together. So this is basically our headboard front and rear and we're going to drill some holes before we weld it all together because it would be way harder to do it after, after the fact. Tacking together the subframe now, just made sure it's all square. This will be the top of my headboard where the electrical is going to go, which is why there's no braces. So let's get on the TIG and stick it all together. All tacked up and we're just gonna do some full passes now. So the internal frame's coming together. We've got both the front and the rear headboard done now. And we've basically just got to put these middle bits in and then the canopy will really start taking some shape. Okay, just quickly on weld sequence, so doing the right hand side and then the left hand side just to make sure it's all square and pulls up evenly. So this end is all welded and I'll do the other one. Frame's all finished up now, we're just going to put the floor in and then we can bond the back and the front panel on. Floor's now in. Okay, so we're just putting some tacks in the floor with a MIG because it would be near on impossible with a TIG, I reckon. Sign me up. I might be young, but I was born in the 1800s. <laughs> For this canopy, we're using glue to bond the panels to the uni strut on the flat faces. This is because as soon as you weld the alley on these faces, it shows up and looks pretty ugly. We're doing full passes on all the corners, which gives the canopy the strength.
Alrighty, so we're just letting the glue dry on the canopy before we weld it off, so we'll let it sit overnight. You can see here we've got the front, back, and then the roof on as well. We're using two sheets for the roof and bolting them together and then running seam sealer down them eventually. If we tried to do this roof panel out of one sheet, it wouldn't fit onto our plasma bed and we would have had to outsource it. We're just test fitting a door up, so looks pretty cool. Just working on the doors now and we're putting these braces on the back side and that's where we attach our gas struts in these holes here and they do add a lot of strength to the door. The other thing we're doing is adding these braces to them as well so we'll add all that and we'll show you how it goes. in the big guns for arguably the hardest welds on the canopy. Looking good. The door is on, the gas struts are in. It's a Saturday night and I'm on my weekend, but I need to get this done because I work nine to five, Monday to Friday. So I have no other option, but really just camp out. Uh, just had a shower outside under the glorious tap. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get it done and, and get it back to Melbourne tomorrow because we're in Shepparton right now and I need to be back at Melbourne tomorrow night. Just getting some final bits of fun. Point of view, I've been let loose on the press break this morning. How exciting. Oh yeah, how cool is that? Alrighty, so we're just finishing off the canopy. Got Justin on the TIG. We're currently TIG limited. If we had two of them, then we could be able to finish off a little bit quicker, but Justin's also way better at welding underneath, which is something that I'm not very good at, and welding the verti ups and the verti downs, which, um, yeah, again, something I'm not good at. So he's way quicker on it than me. That's why he's doing it. I'm actually adding in the jacking points here, so we kind of forgot to do them in the cat, uh, but we'll just drill some holes with a hole saw and then weld in some pipes. Just putting the pinch weld on now and for this canopy we have the pinch weld on the doors and that's because a lot of other canopies have the pinch weld around the inside seal there but you have more tendency to sort of brush up against it and damage the pinch weld so on the doors you're never really going to be damaging it so that's why we've gone on the doors.
getting better. It's been a while since I've done alley, so you can see this side's a little bit inconsistent. Actually, I'm not gonna show you, but uh, it's getting better. It is time. The moment you've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen, canopy is going on the car. So we're going to weigh it in the process. So let's just see how much it comes out to. All right, moment of truth. We're just about to weigh the thing. Justin reckons 162. I reckon 160. What will it be? 157. 157. 0.1, how good. That's pretty good. Here we go, the moment of truth. Will it fit? Will it butt up against the headboard? God, I hope so. Is my headboard at a, a 90? Jeez. Lot in it, isn't there? Just quickly, before the big canopy reveal, we're going to take a quick little break from this episode and tell you about the King Chrome Tools for Life program and how you can score yourself a 2800 kilo garage jack just for being a loyal subscriber to this channel. In a nutshell, it's a range of special kits that anyone can buy, but if you're an apprentice, King Chrome will give you a little bit of free stuff. In addition to that, if you mention that Design and Built sent me in the redemption when you're checking out, you'll get a free 2800 kilo garage jack. Oh. Canopy's on and it lines up very well. I guess that means that the tray that I built in my shed is uh, is actually pretty accurate to the CAD and this is all machine cut and the fact that it lines up means uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Justin's really helped me out with getting these returns right. Honestly, this is not something you can do at home without a CNC press break. And we're really drawing on his knowledge and experience here to make sure these returns are right and to make sure all these gutters are right and that there's, there'll be no water ingress when the doors open and it's raining or when the doors closed and it's raining. Big reason for coming to someone like Justin who's got experience in designing and building these canopies. So this one's not going to leak, hopefully, right, Justin? Nah. At least you've got it uh, somewhere it shouldn't leak. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, um, no, awesome, awesome stuff. So we've got to take this home. We've got to paint it. Well, Shannon's got to paint it. And then we've got to do a full fit out on it. So we're sending this canopy to Shannon to paint it. It's just a bit too big and awkward to paint in the shed and he's going to do a much better job. We want to ensure that the paint sticks to this alley so I'm sanding it back with 240 grit and I'm doing that with an orbital sander and then Shannon will be able to lay a coat of paint on it. Okay, the canopy is fully sanded back now. You can tell here, this is the shiny part that hasn't been sanded, and then this has been sanded, so I didn't get everything because I want to take it off so I didn't buzz the roll hoop accidentally. Just down at C5 Systems with Shan, who painted the canopy, and we just put it on for the first time. Absolutely sensational. What do you reckon, Shan? Mate, she's come up pretty good. I reckon yeah. so as well. Uh, I'm so glad I've gone the paint. Might be a little bit hotter. We'll get to that in the the rest of the video. All right, so that's pretty much all the building done for this episode. Let's get into the design of the canopy. One of the big things about this canopy is it's profiled to my headboard, so it matches exactly. I personally dislike the look of a lot of the angled canopies on the market, and I don't think they would suit my car because it is quite a square shape. Let's quickly chat about the paint. I personally dislike the look of exposed aluminium on cars. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking that black is a terrible choice because it absorbs all the wavelengths of the light and converts them into heat. If the full canopy was black, I would agree with you, but we painted the doors in sandy, which is the part that is most exposed to the sun. Now, as for the back, there'll be a spare tire and jerry cans mounted on there eventually. So the back wall is probably 30% exposed and the roof will likely have a rooftop tent for the longer tours, so it really isn't exposed at all. So the black paint is nothing to worry about. I wanted to keep the inside as bright as possible and hence I left the alley raw. Another option could have been to paint it white, 
but it's just more effort and the raw alley reflects the LED lights really well. Okay, let's talk about a couple of advantages of this style of canopy. So first thing you'll notice is the seals are up on the door. Now, what does that actually mean? It means when you put stuff in and out of the canopy, you won't damage the seals. But secondly, it also means that you can have this flat floor design. So if you have the seals on the actual canopy, it means that you have to have a gutter on the bottom, which generally means the floors sunk in 50 mil and people have to put false floors, which adds to complexity and weight. So... By having the seal on the door, it does mean you can have a completely flat floor, which means your drawer slides are able to just slide out, which is fantastic. So I do think that is a really good design feature. Now, there are some disadvantages with this design as well, and you might run into some problems when you're putting roof racks on and that sort of stuff. But because I'm custom making it all, it's not really a problem for me. Another design feature I really like is the dual latches. So we've got one on either side and they pull into here which is a really rigid piece of the canopy. Now, a common design is for it to go into the sides here. And you have some sort of mechanism that runs across the door. Here it does, so you can see here that really does pull in the seal and makes it a nice sealed unit. So I'm a big fan of this design as opposed to a mechanism that runs across the door. One of the cool things about the Unistrut is we can fasten anything to anywhere and easily reconfigure the canopy by using these little spring nuts. The Unistrut also provides a solid lightweight frame which is easy to run wires down. Now we've just got some jack off points right here which means I can take the canopy off which is pretty cool. So it'll just be one Anderson and then the jack off points and the canopy will be able to come off. So in case you're worried about drainage or anything like that we've got the gutters here so the water will just drip into the gutters and uh, drain around the doors. So when it's raining we won't get any water in the canopy. There are a few different material options when building canopies, steel, alley, or canvas. I personally like the look of aluminium canopies in comparison to the canvas, and I really like working with alley in comparison to steel, as it's much cleaner and forgiving, hence I've opted to go an aluminium canopy. So that's it for the canopy build so far. It's looking pretty empty at the moment, but of course, in true design and built style, we'll be DIYing the full fit out. Pantry, kitchen, drawers, induction, and a real change of pace to the channel, we'll be doing all the 12 volt as well. Here's a little sneak peek of what's to come. Huge shout out to Justin at Aylet Custom Fabrication ACF for making this all possible. And if you want a canopy similar to mine, make sure you go hit him up. And if you like this content and want to see more of the build or the trip content, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Cheers, legends.